It's a beautiful February day, so I'm out here cutting uh, wood with a handsaw. And my goal is to compare the caloric energy it takes to cut by hand versus what it takes to cut with a chainsaw. So I'll be out here for an hour cutting up as much as I can. Each one that I cut, I'm going to measure the diameter. So at the end of the hour, I'll know about how many diameter inches I've cut and how many calories I've burned. I've got a heart monitor on. I'm recording how many uh, beats I have, which are, equates to calories I've burned. And then I'll crunch all the numbers once I'm all done, uh, doing both the handsaw and the chainsaw, and we'll compare them. We'll also compare them with splitting these, both by hand with an X and using a mechanical splitter. So we're gonna see what's the caloric and energetic and hour-wise difference between splitting firewood by hand and doing it with power tools. times. Once cutting it, once splitting it, and once burning it. And that's certainly true today. I want to get out of my too warm clothes before I start sweating and then I get cold. All right. Now I've got, I don't know, not quite two dozen uh, logs cut up today in an hour. So I'm gonna stop my recording of the heart rate. So my average heartbeat was 110 beats per minute. That was an hour and 11 minutes. And I burned 614 calories cutting up this much wood, which I'll quantify by figuring out the area that I cut uh, for each one of these logs. And then I can compare that to the area I cut with a chainsaw later. Uh, using the same methods. So there's one day I'll probably do a couple more days like this so I get a good uh, a good average over over more logs than just this. Well, it's obviously a lot nicer now. It's uh, March and I'm going to finish this up with the chainsaw. I've cut my uh, couple hours worth of uh, wood with a handsaw uh, and now I'm switching over to the chainsaw and I'll do a couple hours and that will probably be the end of it. Uh, but then I'll be able to compare kilocalories uh, gasoline uh, to the volume of wood cut because I've been recording each log that I've cut so I have a, a overall area that I've sawed through with each method uh, so I can compare these things in both uh, work and time. So let's break out the power tools.
Okay, now that I've got everything cut up, I am going to split it. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go for an hour with my heart rate monitor on. I'll split up as much wood as I can and then I'll stack it. And when I, when I stack it, I'll measure the height and the width. Everything's 16 feet wide, so, uh, the, but the height and the length of the pile will tell me about how much wood I've split. Um, and then I'll do the same thing with a wood splitter. Um, and I will measure the height and the width of that. And then I can compare how much energy it takes me to split a cord of wood versus uh, um, the energy it takes me uh, to run a wood splitter to split a cord of wood. I can also compare time and other things. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna get splitting. takes care of the small stuff and now I'm working on the big stuff so this will probably end up using the mall as well as the as the axe a bit but we'll, we'll see how it goes I use a maul with wedges uh, for the larger difficult things and then I use a splitting axe which is a lot lighter than a maul. Mauls are perfectly fine. I like an axe. I actually have a video on how to use a splitting axe in another part of the low tech, uh, the low tech YouTube channel so you can check that out. I'll link to it here. Okay, now to get the square footage, I'm gonna measure the height, which here is two feet, and then I'm gonna measure the distance here, which is four and a half feet, because it's a trapezoid, and the trapezoids are, I mean, I could measure this, the top and the bottom, and take an average, or I can just, the angles are fine, six, it's four and a half feet is the average, so four and a half, times two is nine square feet here. Now I'll pop over to this one. So I've got nine square feet over there and here I've got two and a half by two and a half by five and a half. So that's uh, 11, 12, 13, 14 plus nine. So that is uh, 23 square feet in an hour and about 650 calories. So there we go. The video showed us me with my neighbors. I call them the Grumpy Old Man Tree Service. It's my two retired neighbors. They do this all the time on neighbors' properties. Um, so they were helping me out. Uh, we were three for about 20 minutes and then uh, just the two of us for the last. So I'm gonna have to factor that in when I do my calorie count because uh, it was actually two people, although I was doing uh, the brunt of the work um, for the last 40 minutes. So, so we'll see how that is reflected in the heart data. Okay, so in an hour and seven minutes, I burned 500. Never mind the rooster. I burned 514 calories, um, and we were able to split all this wood, which works out to be about seven by three, 21. So I call that 10 square feet. Four by eight. 16, so 26 square feet. So we'll now go run the numbers and see how that compares to uh, chopping them by hand. Although I do have to split these by hand, uh, we burned a gallon of gas. So that's one gallon of gas, one hour, 514 calories for me. 
So over two months, I cut and split two thirds of a cord of wood. And a cord of wood just measures four feet by four feet by eight feet. Um, it's a standard measurement that people use to describe firewood. And uh, for the manual sawing, I used a one and a half man saw uh, that cost me about $50. Um, and for splitting, I used a Fisker's splitting axe, which was about 70. I also borrowed my neighbor's um, Poulon Pro PR4016 chainsaw, which cost about $169, and a Spico 25 ton uh, splitter, which cost about $1,000. Thanks to both my neighbor Keith for lending me those uh, tools and Phil for helping me run the splitter. If you want to see all the data I collected, you can go to our website, lowtechinstitute.org, and under the research tab, you can click on Low Tech R&D, and there you'll find this and other projects I've done uh, and all the data that I've collected so far. So you can really dig down in this a little deeper than I'm going to here. So our first consideration is time. For many of us, time is the most pressing uh, limit on what we can get done. And in this test, the results are absolutely clear. Chainsaw is by far more efficient than a, a handsaw. It's about five times as fast. To cut up an entire cord of wood, it would have taken me 25 hours with the saw, uh, but only five and a half hours with the chainsaw. Uh, with splitting wood, there was also a clear winner, but it wasn't the one I expected. I expected the splitter to be a lot faster, but in fact, to split an entire cord of wood, it would have taken five and a half hours, and that's because we could do it with two men in half that time. But because we're using two people, it doubles the time. It actually would only take me four and a half hours to split it with an ax. Uh, this was a surprise to me, but actually it turns out most of the time is spent moving wood around, not actually splitting. The splitting is, is actually pretty quick. Another consideration is cost. And again, here was, there was a clear winner. Um, the manual methods were by far cheaper. My saw, again, only cost $50. My, my axe, 70 um, And so the lifetime costs of these are very cheap because they don't really cost anything to run them. The saw needs a, uh, a sharpening kit uh, that costs about $50. So $100 for the saw, $70 for the axe. You know, it costs nothing to run them over their lifetime, which could be 20 or 30 years. But then the power tools cost quite a lot more. The chainsaw itself was only $170. But then you have to consider the gas, the sharpening kit, the extra chain, um, and the oil for the uh, the lubricating oil for the for the chain itself, it actually adds up to over six hundred and sixty dollars uh, for a decade of use. Out of which you're only going to get about five hundred hours of life, um, which means you could cut up about ninety cords of wood. In the splitting category, it's even more of a blowout. The as I said, the axe costs seventy dollars. The um, the splitter itself costs over $1,000 plus the gallon of gas for every hour you use it. So um, <laughs> these costs add up. And if you split it out on a per, per cord level, uh, saying, let's take for example, um, you cut nine cords a year for a decade, um, that would cost you $7.37 a cord to cut with a chainsaw, but only 37 cents uh, with a used handsaw. But it would take you five times as long. Uh, with the splitting, it would cost about 73 cents a cord to split it with an axe, plus your time, of course, uh, but it would cost $17.42 to split it with a splitter. So you're paying a lot more to split things more slowly, but save yourself a little bit of energy, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but with the hand cutting, uh, that's a lot of time and might very well be worth it to get the chainsaw, um, unless you really enjoy using the manual saw or have two people. Maybe a two-man a two -man saw might be more efficient. I've used them before and it was a lot easier than the one-and-a-half-man saw. Now we can also look at labor. And to measure labor, we use kilocalories, basically food calories. Um, a calorie is how much energy it takes to raise a pound of water one degree. And we're looking at uh, how many of those I burned while doing these different activities. And we measured that using a heart monitor, which is able to more accurately convert how much energy I'm actually burning um, by measuring my heartbeat. And so uh, what we were able to find was that uh, operating a chainsaw to split up a cord of wood uh, for that five hours would have only burned 1,500 calories. But if I were to hand saw out a cord of wood, which would have taken me 25 hours, 
I would have burned almost 13,000 calories. So there's a huge difference there uh, in terms of how much energy I am expending. So again, the chainsaw probably does win out uh, for cutting up, uh, cutting up logs. But then if we turn to the splitting, it's a different story. Um, it only took me 2,700 calories, or would take only 2,700 calories to split an entire cord of wood, which is pretty efficient when you look at the uh, comparison with the wood splitter, it would have taken me only 1,800 calories. And you say, well, 27 is a lot more than 1,800. But if you think about it, it isn't. Uh, it's only 1,000 calories difference to split an entire cord of wood. This is the same as a 20-mile bike ride. Yeah, it's, it's work, but it's not a crazy difference. Uh, for the cost and the time because it's actually again quicker to split it with an axe And this of course all assumes that you're um, an able-bodied person with a healthy heart um, That sort of thing if you have a if you have a bad ticker uh, you definitely want to uh, Use power tools when you can to reduce that stress on your body, but if you're uh, able-bodied or you like a, a, a quiet or working environment um, by far Hands down, the uh, the hand tools are are more are more pleasant. I'm particularly interested in emissions and energy for two reasons. First, people often debate how sustainable is uh, a wood stove. Second, as we need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, burning less fuel. Uh, and doing things more efficiently is increasingly important. So we'll take the EPA standard of 8.9 kilograms of carbon dioxide per gallon of gasoline burned uh, for this comparison. It's also important to remember that large amounts of other gases and particulate matter um, are released in this two-stroke chainsaw engine, which makes it actually worse than what I'm gonna say it is. Um, I wasn't able to find good numbers on this. Um, but they can emit up to 300 times more greenhouse gases when burning fuel than a clean four-stroke engine. So even without going into these significant emissions, let's look at the carbon alone. To cut up a cord of wood, a chainsaw will emit about 4.6 kilograms of carbon, plus plenty of much worse stuff. That's about the same amount as a power plant emits to create seven kilowatt hours, which is about a third of what a house needs in a day. A splitter is going to burn through about 2.3 gallons, emitting about 20 point, uh, about 20 kilograms of carbon uh, to split that cord of wood, which is um, the equivalent of about two-thirds of what a house needs. So all together, using a chainsaw and a splitter, you're emitting the same amount as a, the energy used to power a house for an entire day. And that doesn't even begin to take into account the significant amount of emissions from the manufacturing process. I haven't been able to find real hard data on the carbon footprint of a chainsaw and a splitter, but a computer makes takes about 200 to 800 kilograms of carbon emissions to produce, and a car is about six. So a wood splitter might be about one or two uh, tons uh, of carbon emitted to produce them. So there's that on top of the use uh, carbon emissions. The saw and the ax don't emit any carbon. And you might say, well, aren't you breathing? Doesn't that create carbon dioxide? And yes, it does, but that's a different type of carbon dioxide. When we breathe and exchange air with the atmosphere, that's carbon that's already in the atmosphere. We're not adding carbon, we're just changing its, um, its, its form. Um, and the same thing goes with burning wood. This is wood that pulled carbon out of the air and created, and the ground, and created wood. Now when I'm burning it, it's going back into the atmosphere. That's not new carbon. That's priced into the carbon we have in the atmosphere. But when I burn fossil fuels, when I burn fuel oil or um, natural gas to heat my house, that's carbon that wasn't in the atmosphere that was in the ground that I'm now burning and putting into the atmosphere. So that's the difference. That's why an efficient stove, and this one is very efficient, um, burning sustainably harvested wood is actually uh, not adding to carbon emissions, really. Um, if that tree fell in the wood and rotted, most of that carbon would go back into the atmosphere anyway. So we're just oxidizing it here very quickly and releasing it soon. Um, that, that's the only difference. It, it, it's going to go back into the carbon cycle that it was pulled out of. So that is, uh, that is why I would argue that an efficient wood stove from sustainably harvested wood, and these were all dead trees um, that were taken off of neighbor's property 
Um, they often fall in farmer's fields and they need to be cleared. Um, so it's, it's deadfall wood. This is not, we're not cutting down fresh virgin forest to do this. This is all deadfall. So it's, I would argue, a, an efficient and a, and a sustainable way uh, to heat our home. Uh, there was a lively discussion on social media about this when I posted about it earlier and somebody brought up the fact that if I'm burning calories to do this stuff then I'm burning food calories which are more expensive to produce than gas calories and that's absolutely true. Um, to produce a gallon of gas you only have to burn a gallon of gas but to produce a kilocalorie of food you have to burn 10 kilocalories of uh, fossil fuels to produce that calorie which is kind of insane. And that's if you buy your food at the grocery store. This last year, I happened to grow uh, two-thirds of our food. So my kilocalories have much less carbon uh, footprint uh, than a standard one, but let's not worry about that. We'll just take the standard value of food you buy at the grocery store. So for example, when I burn 13,000 calories to cut an entire cord of wood uh, by hand, that really means 129,000 kilocalories of fossil fuels were burned to create those food calories for me to eat to power the saw. So it's even more of a blowout um, using if you if you go that far down the, the rabbit hole here. Um, and this you know just further exacerbates the splitting blowout too because those 2,700 uh, food calories that I burn splitting up a cord of wood um, is only 20, uh, 27,000 kilocalories of fossil fuels used to produce that food. But if we add on the food calories to the fossil fuel calories for the splitter, that's approaching 100,000 kilocalories uh, to split a quart of wood. So what's our takeaway? The handsaw is cheaper in cost and energy, but the chainsaw was faster and less work. We can also look at how the ax is cheaper, more efficient, but does take more calories. So in the end, the decision of how you split up your wood comes down to what counts most for you, time, money, or the environment. If time is your guiding factor, then bucking logs with a chainsaw and splitting with an ax is probably the way to go. If money's your lodestar, then by all means do everything by hand. It is significantly cheaper. This holds true for the environment as well. Unless you consider the fossil fuels uh, used in the production of your food, uh, doing everything by hand is more environmentally friendly. Uh, it is a lot of calories to use that handsaw for such a long time. Um, but in all cases, splitting with an axe or a maul is more efficient in times and, and cost, and it's only a, little, uh, only a little less efficient in calories, and frankly, who among us couldn't stand to lose a few pounds, right? Um, if a chainsaw company wants to send me an electric chainsaw uh, to, to throw into this mix, I'll absolutely do it. Uh, you can drop me a line. Um, but there's a lot of carbon cost up front with an electric chainsaw. So that necessarily, that's not going to change a lot of this. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe so that you can get other uh, low-tech R&D uh, videos when they come out. Check out our website, lowtechinstitute.org. You can also find us on all the different social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, check us out there and uh, thanks for watching.